if you see this slide carefully this is how a dfa looks like if you pay closer attention you will be able to see that each and every state has two transitions each so if i talk about q0 then q0 is basically having a transition a which leads it to q1 similarly if i talk about q0 on input b it goes to q2 so can i write it like this just have a look let me change the color of the pen if i write it like this q0 on input a it is basically going to q1 we have to write it like this transition of q0 on input a goes to q1 similarly transition of q0 on input b goes to q2 and so on so can i say that for three states with two inputs we will have six transitions exactly six transitions why just count it out we are having this first transition over here this second third fourth fifth sixth irrespective of the sequence we can uh, assign numbers to those transitions and we will get six transitions exactly that is what is the beauty of a deterministic finite automata or dfa all the states have specific transitions for a given input and there is no ambiguity now whenever i'm saying ambiguity it simply means that if there is a state q0 then we will be knowing for sure that for that particular state q0 if there is an input a the machine will only go to a specific state and it will not go to multiple states it is very clear from the diagram that q0 on input a will go to q1 only q0 on input a will not go to q1 as well as q2 simultaneously it will only go to q1 as per the diagram obviously the diagrams will change according to the questions but as per this particular diagram i can definitely say that this is a dfa or a deterministic finite automata i hope i am able to clear this fact if i go to the next slide you will be able to see a similar diagram but over here can you spot the difference from q0 on input a we are going to q1 as usual but there is again a self loop on q0 for the input a so doesn't it cause ambiguity yes there is ambiguity because there will be two transitions of this sort for example q0 on input a will go to q1 initially then q0 on input a can remain in the same state q0 yes or no see this if i consider this as the first transition and this as a second transition i can say that according to the first transition q0 on input a goes to q1 but there is one more transition on q0 for input a which is going to q0 so i can easily say that i can confidently say that there is an ambiguity over here in the case of nfa so what is the use of the nfa then what is the significance of nfa then just have a look on the other transitions as well other states as well and count the number of transitions number of transitions 1 2 3 each and every input on a transition has to be considered separately so it will be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 so is there any fixed number of transitions possible in this case no because we are dealing with some kind of an ambiguity over here because as you can see q2 on input a it goes to q1 similarly q2 on input a has a self loop on q2 so we are not sure how many transitions are there in each of these states so that leads to ambiguity clear so in uh, so as opposed to the previous case where in a dfa we knew that for uh, three states and two inputs we will have three into two that is six transitions exact but in this case that is not possible because we don't know how many transitions per state are there because there could be multiple transitions there could be self loops there could be a transition with the same input going to three different states so that is what gives rise to ambiguity fine so that is the beauty of nfa but you would ask me what is the beauty of nfa then why are we dealing with an nfa let me give you a very basic example uh you you must have studied uh, the shortest path first algorithm or any any of those algorithms shortest path for example let me take the example of a shortest path suppose there is a path uh, something like this and there is this destination so there are multiple ways of reaching that destination suppose something like this fine so there is this destination which we want to reach and there are multiple ways of reaching this destination now it's your job to find the shortest path 
suppose I'm starting from this point A and I want to reach this point B, there could be multiple ways. I can take this path, this to this, this, or I can go up, then this, and then this, or I can select this path. I can go straight. Okay, so there are multiple paths. I can take this one also. Now it's my job to identify which is the shortest path to reach B. What is the criteria? Each and every path will have a cost associated with that, right? So if I start from A, it will be something like this. From A, I have these three options, one, two, and three. So what I will do, I will select the path, for example, over here, five, four, and six. So I will select this path four, right? Out of these three possible options, I would be selecting this path with cost four or with distance four. So over here, the DFAs may not come into picture or the DFAs won't be able to solve this problem efficiently. Why? Because for a DFA, we have a fixed set of transitions and we have to follow that. But if we go with an NFA, the NFA can decide whether it uh, should go to this particular path or it should go to this particular path, right? Either this or this or this. The NFA can decide on its own. On its own as in you have to provide the logic. Based upon that, the NFA will decide the shortest path. So that is the beauty of NFAs. So depending upon the case study I'm writing over here, depending upon the case study or the use case, what exactly you're trying to solve, what problem you're trying to solve, you have to decide whether you should go with a DFA or an NFA. Is it making sense now? So that's the beauty of finite automata. So that is the basic difference between a DFA and an NFA. I hope you are able to understand this particular concept. So we have almost reached the end of this video. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, just do subscribe to it and continue this particular video. Okay. So the last topic for this particular video is going to be NFA with epsilon moves. As you have already seen that uh, FA without output consists of these three types. We have already seen what is a DFA. We have already seen what is an NFA. Now let's focus on what is going to be an epsilon NFA. If you remember the concept of epsilon, I hope you have seen my previous videos. If not, kindly go back and check the video quickly. Then you will get the idea of what exactly epsilon is. If you remember, we had discussed something like this, an empty string. Okay. I had told you that an empty string is nothing but also called as epsilon. Or I can say a string of length zero. That is what we call as an epsilon. Clear? So in this case, just have a look at this diagram. It is again an NFA, but it is having epsilon moves. If you see this diagram, just have a look over here. What is happening? Q0 on input A goes to Q1. Q0 on input epsilon is staying in the same state. So can I write it like this transition of Q0 on input A goes to Q1. Similarly, transition of Q0 on input B goes to Q1 and there, there are two more transitions of uh, Q0 that is Q0 on epsilon goes to Q0 itself and finally this one that is Q0 on epsilon goes to Q2. Now you can apply the previous concept just now we saw the shortest path ka concept as you uh, as you can see over here, depending upon the shortest path, the NFA will make a call or take a call. So same thing applies over here. There are four transitions from Q0, but which one is the most beneficial that the machine will decide based upon the question in front of it or based upon the inputs in front of it, right? So it takes into consideration the current input, the state and the objective of that particular machine, right? So in this case, Q0 on input A goes to Q1, but if the machine simply wants to change its state without taking any input, if this is the condition, then the machine will go to Q2. Let me add a slide and write down the conditions to make life simpler for you. So based upon this particular diagram, the first case would be, let me write it down over here, Q0 to Q2 on input epsilon. So what is it exactly? Q0 to q2 on input epsilon what is it doing it is simply changing the state yes or no it is not taking any input so i am writing over here don't take inputs simply change state so if i want 
my machine to behave like this that is simply change your state without taking any inputs then i would be opting for this particular transition transition number four if i write down the numbers over here this is one this is two this is three and this is four so i can say that if simply changing the state is my concern then i would be going with transition number four but what if i want to remain in the same state then which of these transitions one or four should i opt for obviously i would be opting for transition number one why because let me write it down over here q0 to q0 because there is a self loop on input epsilon so i will i would write it over here again don't take any input whenever i'm saying don't take any input it doesn't mean i'm not reading any input i am reading an input but that input is epsilon that is input of length zero okay so i would write it like this don't take any input simply remain in same state simply remain in same state so i hope i'm able to uh, make you understand this concept so that is what is the beauty of epsilon so depending upon certain situations where you would like to change your state or remain in the same state without taking any inputs then you can opt for this particular uh, machine which is what we call as nfa with epsilon moves so you're going to learn about all of these machines in detail whenever we will actually take up problems based on this so at that time you would be able to recollect what exactly we are doing right now okay so just have a look at the definition just to bring this lecture to an end the states may or may not have a uh, definite or defined defined transitions for a given input okay there is obviously going to be ambiguity but the states may have epsilon transitions or null transitions these are also called as null transitions so i hope you are able to understand these important concepts because without learning the basics of these concepts you won't be able to solve the problems which are going to be uh, there in the future fine on that note i would like to bring this lecture to an end if you like this lecture do subscribe to the channel share this video with your friends and keep liking the content thank you so much